Welcome to another Tableau tutorial video. Today I'm going to show you how to create a moving average where the user can actually change the, the time period. What we've got here is just days and um, values, sales. And I'm going to show you this moving average formula. And this is just going to be a three day average. We're using the window sum, and we're going to sum up the sales. The starting point is going to be two days back, and the ending date is going to be the ending date is going to be the date we're on. So what that means is when we're looking here on day January 5th, it's going to add up the 20, the 288, the 16, and divide it by the count of the sales also going back two days or two time periods and stopping at the current item zero. So we'll just bring the moving average over, double click that. We're actually going to move this here. And so you can see this here, 16, there isn't any backup, so it's just 16. These add up to 304 divided by 2 gets you to 152. This is, what is this, uh, 324 divided by 3 gets you to the 104, the 108. All right, so it's going back to and this current date here, so three days. So now, if we look at this, what we'd like to do is make this so that it is uh, dynamic, that the users can change. So I've already created this ahead of time, but we're going to put in here moving trend. This is the parameter. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. And we want it to be a negative because we're going to be going, this is the, the start date, as you can see there. You're going to have the start date is two days in the past and then your end date is no offset or zero. Okay. Now when we look at the creating a moving trend parameter name, we're going to have it an integer. We're not going to want um, half days. and don't want string. Our current value is three days. Now this is where it gets kind of exciting. Uh, coming down here you can see the value and this is what it's displayed as. When we've done the moving average, when I did the moving average, it's all in days. And so rather than saying 7 days, 28 days, however many days, I've already I've changed it so that it's in something that the user might find more um, usable or may relate to better. And then behind the scenes, this is the number that is going to get passed to the formula. Now, as we know, four weeks is really 28 days. We're using 27 here because the function is zero based. Let's see here, click OK. Because this function is based off of zero. Right? And so if we have, let's see, we'll just show here. Okay, we'll show this, we'll show the moving trend, one day, we want it to be just that, we want it to be the same value. And then when we go to 23 day, I mean when we go to three days, it will be, um, it will be three days because this value, it is inclusive of that day. So if we were to go to four weeks, 27 days back, plus the current day would be the full 28. Now you may have a different way of calculating it, that's fine in terms of days. Okay, so this is cool, but let's use this now in a graph. So we're gonna let's switch the, the dimensions on the row shelf to pull the measures off we're going to bring the sales to rows 
We're going to bring the moving average to rows as well, so you're going to have a dual axis. And we're going to, I don't want to make this one orange. And then we will create the dual axis, synchronize the values. I always want to do that. And now you've got a moving uh, three day average. You can see the big spike is carried for a couple days. One week flattens out. Let's just make this continuous so it looks like a chart. Four weeks. And of course, then you can also expand how many items you have in your moving trend and you could shorten the time period under the order date. But that's how you do it. The key is you're adding up the sales. You're summing up the sales for some period of time and dividing by that count for that period of time. There you go. Enjoy.